Hello, I'm Sheila Hargis, and I'm a volunteer with Travis Audubon in Austin, Texas. And I'm going to spend a few minutes today telling you, sharing some information with you about purple martin migration and an aspect of that migration that I think is very spectacular. So I'm specifically talking about the southbound migration. And as you might expect, this happens after the young are on their own for the year. And we know that the birds are headed to South America. So this map shows in orange where purple martins breed, and then the blue area is where they spend their non-breeding time. So really the work is to get from North America to South America. Purple martins are diurnal migrants. That means that they migrate during the day. And then at night, they come together in these communal roosts. If you go to Purple Martin Conservation Association's website and look for Project Martin Roost, you'll find this map. And it shows the, the purple circles are known roost sites and the yellow circles are suspected roost sites. But if you zoom in to um, like Texas or a Southern state, you'll see the location of the roost sites. And you can imagine that as all the Northern birds are headed South, these roosts in the Southern states can be very large. For us in Texas, we have about 15 known roosts and they, they start sometime in mid-June and last through usually late August or maybe a little bit into September. These are for the most part in urban areas. It's a little surprising to have this, this spectacle of nature happening in these, these major urban areas, but that's what's happening uh, with shopping centers being very popular as the chosen roost sites for the birds. The birds will choose a small stand of trees in these shopping centers. For us here in Austin, those are usually live oak trees. And then these, and then there's this wide open space around these stands of trees, usually asphalt parking lots. Now Austin's roost has a pretty interesting history, but I won't I won't spend the next hour telling you uh, all about it. I'll just summarize it very quickly here. From the mid 1980s through 2014, the roost was in the Highland Mall area. And as you can see from this map, it's, it's basically North Central Austin, at least at this point in time. And then in 2015, we went out expecting the roost to be in the same area and we couldn't find the birds, but we were able with a little bit of effort to find the roost and that the birds had moved it across I-35 to the Capitol Plaza area. And this is about a mile as the Purple Martin flies. And then in 2018, we went out there to that same area, expecting the roost to be there. It was not. We went back over to Highland Mall area, expecting to find the birds back over there. We could not. And then we were pretty perplexed and concerned. And a few days later, a, a person who was watching weather radar noticed what he thought was a roost up in Round Rock. And we went up there and found the roost. And for some reason, the birds had moved the roost 11 miles north. Now, if you think about the exploding cost of living in Austin, it only makes sense that, that the birds have moved to the suburbs as, as many of us have had to do. So the roost was up in Round Rock for a while. Um, in early 2021, I went up there and found a small group of birds roosting up there. But then a few, and thinking that's where the roost was going to be for that summer. And then a few days later, someone contacted me, another person looking at weather radar. And he said, well, you, you do know you have a large roost in Austin, too. And he pointed me back to Capitol Plaza area. And I went out there. And sure enough, there was a much bigger roost at Capitol Plaza. So the birds are back in Austin. And uh, we're, we're happy about that. There's actually seems to be a small roost in Round Rock now and a much larger roost in Capitol Plaza. And that's the situation I think this year also. So this is the roost site. Again, not where you would expect to have a bunch of nature happening, but, but it is at least when the roost is there. Last year, the birds mainly roosted in these trees right up next to Chase Bank and the overflow as the numbers build built over time um, expanded into these trees. 
so far this summer, they're in these trees for the most part with some birds in these trees. So we'll see how this plays out if they move or if they stay in, the, in those trees. Now the roost experience is starts about 30 minutes before dark. And if you arrive at that point in time, then you're probably gonna see a few birds, but they'll be very high in the sky. They'll, they'll be circling around, maybe you can hear them. And then as the night progresses, more and more birds come in. And, you know, at some point you'll look up and you'll go, oh, well, that's a lot of birds up there, but they're not exactly starting to put on the show yet. There's just a lot of birds. And then as it gets very close to dark, there more and more birds have come in and they're actually starting to swirl around. They don't just come and perch in the trees, they actually put on a show. And as, as it gets closer to dark, they're swirling lower and lower. There's many more birds, so you can hear them very well. And then at some point they do actually perch in the trees to spend the night. And when you get many birds, then, then they must swirl around or they're gonna collide with each other. So you can see this is a very spectacular event just for the sheer number of birds, but then you have the swirling and kind of the show that they put on. Now, I will tell you up front that videos do not do this experience justice. You must come out to see one of these roosts for yourself, but of course that's not going to stop me from showing you a couple of videos, maybe just to whet your appetite and get you, um, you know, out there to see it in person. This is a video that I took earlier this summer at the at the Capitol Plaza location, and it, it's earlier in the evening, but you can you can see that there are already a lot of birds in the sky, and these are all purple martins. And then this is a video that I took a, a few years ago when they were up at Round Rock. And so it's nearly dark. I've zoomed in on the trees where they're coming into perch. And here we go. Now there's quite a bit of shuffling as the birds are coming into perch, but eventually they do settle down somewhat. And if you were to walk up to the tree where you could really see what's happening, you're gonna find the birds packed in just nearly shoulder to shoulder. And this is even when they have a lot of places to expand, they're still packed in. Now, as far as the roost stats go, we know the numbers build. They start off very small and they build over the season. Uh, we believe it's, poss it's likely that we could have 10,000 birds in early July. We know that the peak is usually in late July or early August for us. We estimate, but it's a very, very rough estimate that we could have 400,000 birds or more at the peak. But honestly, who the heck knows? Because we have no rigorous way of determining how many birds. When you have that many birds swirling overhead, it's just impossible to count them. But we, we try to estimate, but eh, it is really an estimate. Now, as far as the Purple Martin parties go, we at Travis Audubon realized a few years ago that you know this spectacle that birders knew about and were going out to see regularly was is, was phenomenal and something that everyone should get to see. So we started we started our purple martin parties and publicizing them and just getting the the general public to come out and see this amazing spectacle of nature. We thought it was an awesome opportunity to educate and engage the public about purple martins but then birds in general. And they're great fun. We, we have regularly people tell us that they're, this is better than the bats. And the bats are pretty darn awesome. So uh, they're, they're both something you should see. But the Purple Martin parties and the Purple Martin show is a little bit better than the bats. 
So we tell people they should bring a lawn chair and a hat or umbrella because when you have 400,000 birds swirling overhead, well, you should be prepared for things to happen. Our parties this summer are Saturday nights and from mid-July to early August. We're about to wrap those up. And this is a this is a, a party of one night at um, in the Capitol Plaza area, a little bit further north of there. And for the most part, these uh, attendees are not naturalists. They they're not necessarily nature lovers. They're just out to see this 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 show. And we're hoping that with the Purple Martin's help, that we actually change that and get them uh, start them on their journey to being. Um, a, someone who cares for nature. We have volunteers that are working the show. This is Denise and she's usually staffing the display. And in this example, she's showing those people how to identify a purple martin in the sky. We have other people who, who work the event and they walk around and talk with people in the crowd. And it's really cool because people are really hungry to know more and uh, we have the opportunity to share our love of Purple Martins with them. So we have a Purple Martin page on travisaudubon.org. If you can't come out to visit us this summer, please, tr please plan to come out next summer and you can check this page to see where the roost is and when our parties are. Now there are some threats to the roost. Uh, free roaming cats can get up and kill birds in the trees. Raccoons can get in the trees. Humans can be a threat. Not all landowners want this roost on their on their property. Um, it, it, it is messy, absolutely. And so some humans, some landowners are, can tolerate that and others can't. But the way that we've tried to mitigate these threats is by putting flashing on trees when necessary to keep the cats and raccoons out. We have volunteers coming out every morning to look for injured birds and taking them to a wildlife rehab facility. We also have those same volunteers recovering dead birds so that we can get those to a research facility. And then again, we just think the education and engagement is critical to our efforts to be able to protect the roost in the future. And here's the culprit this, this season that we discovered. And that flashing absolutely stops his efforts to get into the tree. Now there's so many unanswered questions about purple martin migration. We're starting to scratch that surface uh, with all sorts of efforts by PMCA and others, uh, but there's still so much to, left to be discovered. And we in Austin are anxious to partner with researchers, grad students, whoever to start helping answer those questions. Some of the questions that come to mind for me are, you know, where are the birds coming from that populate the roost over time? How did the birds pick a roost location? Can we safely and humanely get them to relocate the roost when needed? And how do we estimate the numbers? We also think that there's wonderful collaboration opportunities. We would love to learn from other organizations with roost sites in their communities. We would share our experiences and just hopefully, hopefully out of that collaboration, develop best practices for both protection and education of the roost. Now, I've just barely scratched the surface here, and I want to leave you with a few videos that you can watch uh, online. 300,000 Purple Martins in the Amazon is a PMCA video. Managing the Martins is a Texas Parks and Wildlife video. And then American Birding Association has a podcast, Martin Migration Magic with Kevin Frazier. So all of these are great resources for you to learn more about the migration aspect of Purple Martins. And with that, thank you so much for this opportunity. I have, uh, it's very much an honor to me to get to speak with you. And I, I am really serious about collaborating both with researchers and others who have roost in your area. Please reach out to me if you're interested in uh, working together in, in that regard. Uh, my first name is spelled differently than most, so please note that, uh, but then otherwise shoot me an email and we will start that conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sheila. Find you here. I didn't realize, or maybe I did realize and have forgotten that uh, it moved back to Austin. I thought it was still in uh, 
Round Rock. All right. Got some comments in chat here. Uh, uh, amazing that so many birds can congregate, congregate like that and not run into each other, especially considering many of these are new hatchier birds, right? Amazing. Yeah. How many do you guys find a lot? I know you talked about rescuing ones that may end up on the ground. Do you do you end up with many? To my knowledge, no, we haven't um, found a lot. Um, I mean, it is an amazing show in the air. Um, and, you know, they have to swirl around when you've got that many birds flying, really. Uh, but, yeah, the, we do occasionally find some, um, you know, under the roost or in other parts of the parking lot. So it's hard to know exactly what happened. But but we don't have big numbers yeah. of birds. Yeah, that's that's not uncommon with what uh, I hear from folks at other roosts. Um, uh, Jason says, I love the outreach potential of these Purple Martin parties. Yeah, I mean, nothing better to capture the, you know, general public's attention than a bajillion Purple Martins in the sky <laughs> doing this uh, spectacular aerobatic maneuver. Even the most jaded person with their head down <laughs> in their cell phone will will take notice for sure. Yeah, I mean, we have people, you know, not there for our parties, but they're there to actually shop. You know, imagine that. And they come out and they even take note and, and we'll talk to them if they want to talk. So exactly, exactly. Um, Ron is asking about this Saturday. Will there be a lot of Purple Martins? How are your numbers uh, at this time of year? What are you expecting? Well, you know, again, impossible to really know. But my sense <laughs> of things was that last weekend was uh, it was fewer birds than the weekend before. So this amazing heat and drought that we're um, experiencing, you know, why would the birds hang around? Actually, I think they should move on to better pastures, right? <laughs> um, and so, but I still think I, I estimated 150,000 birds last last weekend. So I, I think that the uh, the party is going to be pretty good tomorrow night or yeah. uh, Saturday night. It, yeah, the numbers might be down compared to other weeks, but that's a heck of a lot of birds still, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, Daniel Green and Chad says it's amazing that every one of these birds was born in a house provided by a landlord. I try and drive that message home to uh, anybody who uh, sees a Purple Martyrs because that's really, yep. you know, a, a great moment to stick that in there, right? Yes, yes. And, and we, we also spread that that message, you know, that, that a lot of people go, well, why are the birds here? You know, it's like, well, or aren't they afraid of being around humans? Like, well, they were all born around humans. That's all they know, you know. So. Exactly. And we also have landlords come and visit us. And, you know, I'm always having fun making them try to identify their birds in uh, with 150 thousand other birds yeah yeah that actually uh i, I got a question here and then that's going to really kind of lead us into the next talk but zach in chat says do the local businesses in that parking lot embrace tolerate or reject the martins how, how is the interaction with the uh, property owners yeah we are very fortunate here in austin i know others are not so fortunate but we have been fortunate um in having landowners that, you know, they would, they at least tolerate. I don't know that they really appreciate the mess, but um, they, uh, they tolerate it. Um, we did get in trouble one year because we forgot, well, we didn't ask for permission to have our parties on their site. Um, and now this year we do not publicize our parties until we have that permission, you know, and it, it just makes sense to respect yeah respect the landowners yeah makes sense makes sense uh, important lessons learned and important yes. advice for other people um you know i i really i always hold up travis audubon's outreach with purple martin roost as an example to other you know communities that have purple martin roosts um so kudos to to you and the rest of uh of the group there for uh taking what could be a really negative experience to to making it something uh, that's for the greater good. So thank you so yeah. much, Sheila. Thank you. Yes, and we're still waiting for you to come down, Joe. Uh, next year, I'm going to be there. I promise. 